Welcome back to the show. Now, CMB Bank Raceway Park is one of the few asphalt tracks in the state. We were there Sunday afternoon for their second race of the season. It was supposed to be their third race of the season, but the second race was rained out. Well, they held a couple of features which were geared to attract the locals, including the dirt racing teams. But the featured event was a 100 lap late model event. The field was led to the green by Travis Fisher, who races late models and modifieds at tracks such as Mountain and Mahoning Valley, and is a former champion at Shangri-La too. He jumps out to the lead, while the 93 of Dave Russell and 75 of Nathan Russell, no relation, battle for the second spot. Going through three and four, Dave Russell begins to edge past the 75 to secure the position as they complete the first lap. Running in the fourth position is the 48 of Sam Fallone, who had won the past two 100 lappers at CNB. Fifth belongs to the 32 of Glenn Galt Jr. Debris on the track would lead to this restart on lap six. By the time they get to turn one, Dave Russell has his 93 machine at the head of the field. Fisher settles into the second spot. Galt would later work the outside of Fallone to take away the fourth position as they go through turns one and two. A few laps later, he would make the bottom groove work for him as he moves into third with this pass of Nathan Russell. Joining the mix was the 11 of Bob Weber from New York. Meanwhile, up front, Dave Russell continued to open up his lead over Fisher and Galt to where it was nearly a full straightaway. This race gave some locals a chance to dust off some old cars. Here's Ed Dillon from St. Mary's in the blue and red number eight. For many laps during the first quarter of the race, Weber seemed to gain a position on Nathan Russell, only to have Russell use the momentum from the second groove to maintain the position. Nearing the halfway point of the race, we had a tight battle for second between Fisher, Galt, and Weber, with Fallone not too far behind in fifth, although they were nearly half of a lap behind the leader. There would be a competition caution at lap 50. During the stop, it was discovered that Dave Russell had a flat tire. Russell had to go to the tail of the lead lap cars after the break, so he had to restart in the ninth spot. That handed the lead to Travis Fisher, who jumped to a good lead over Weber as we go back to green. For a few laps, the top three ran in a group, with the second trio a little over a second behind, which included Dave Russell, who ran in sixth. On lap 62, Galt goes from third to the lead as he passes both Weber and Fisher. It's about a dead heat at the line, but Galt begins to edge past Fisher going through one and two. Weber would take second away from Fisher on lap 71. On lap 74, Dave Whitaker slides to a stop on the front stretch. As he coasts towards the infield, things get a little hot. On the single foul restart, Fisher has problems and pulls to the inside. He then slides up the track in front of Dave Russell. For a few laps, Weber kept pace with Galt, but down the stretch, Glenn Gold Jr. pulled away to pick up the victory. Congratulations on your win, Glenn. Now, Dave Russell was way ahead until he ended up changing his tire during a caution and being sent to the back. Do you think he would have made it to victory lane if that wouldn't have happened? If, uh, if he didn't change the tire, you mean? If he would not have been sent to the back. Oh, no, I think we were pretty in pretty good shape, but I didn't have any pressure from him. So uh, he only had to pass not that many cars, so I, I think we were, I think we were okay. okay. Now, uh, a lot of people say that asphalt driving or racing is more like single file parades, but you proved otherwise by passing on the outside. Yeah, we started, uh, I think, what was it, fifth? I think it was fifth, sixth, something like that today. Um, you know, last week up at Motordrome, we started uh, sixth, eighth, no, eighth, and uh, finished second there, almost one. Uh, I don't think, it, you know, it really, if you've got something that, that's going, you'll get it there. Now, near the latter part of the race, you and Bob Weber really had a battle going until you pulled ahead. Yeah, Bob's a class act. Uh, I've been racing against him for years, and uh, he, he, he had me up on, on the wheel the whole, whole rest of the race and was pressuring me and uh, never gave me a break. He, he, did a, he did a really good job. It was great seeing the Orange Blossom Special in Victory Lane again after your father had been there so many times before. Yeah, this is actually the first track that I started racing late models at, so it was nice for me to come back and... Uh, all, I was a kid growing up watching my dad race here, and uh, it's always nice to come back here to CMB Bank. Well, thank you, and congratulations again. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here. So Glenn Gold Jr. is your winner in the 100-lap late model race. Bob Weber came in second. 
The Russells, Nathan and Dave, were third and fourth, and Tom Ferris Jr. came in fifth. Well, in the first 50 laps, Dave Russell was so far ahead that in the second 50 laps, when he was sent to the back, I was expecting him to get way ahead of the field and actually challenge for the lead, but that didn't happen. No, I was expecting the same thing, and we found out after the race that he experienced some power steering problems in the second stage of that race. Again, congratulations, Glenn Galt Jr., and we will have more from CMB Bank Raceway Park later on in the show. Next, we go back to Pennsylvania Motor Speedway for more action from Saturday evening. Pit Pass returns right after this. It's known as the Tricky Triangle, a track whose sum total equals a challenge like nowhere else. Smoke is boiling between Bush and Johnson. It is Pocono Raceway, where the first race was won by a king. Every race is full throttle to the photo finish. Virtual dead heat. And Rex are not the end, but the start of a comeback. This is Pocono Raceway, where history is measured in right angles.